I guess the people who hate this game should crash and die, am I right? That... that pun was too gruesome. I'm going to hell. Sorry about that. Sign me off, intro! be no surprise to you that the Crash Bandicoot series is one of my all-time favorites. From the PS1 trilogy to the racing spin-offs and Crash to Insanity, which is one of my favorite games of all time. But don't worry, I already blabbed enough about to Insanity in my other videos, so I will get to my point. Overall, they all are very solid and entertaining games with a huge fan base. Sadly, the developments of the Crash games has been rather bumpy. The license of the franchise has been passed on from developer to developer, who all experimented with different types of games, with some odd results that we better leave untouched. Nowadays, the license is in the hands of Activision. <laughs> Yeah, that Activision, who, alongside Radical Entertainment, made the game I am going to review today. Crash Mind Over Mutant, available for the PS2, Wii and Xbox 360. The Crash fanbase definitely does not like Mind Over Mutant. In my eyes, it doesn't deserve this amount of hate, and I am very glad some of my subscribers requested me to review it, since now I can present my 6 Obsidious fan reviews to tell you why I think this game needs and deserves more praise. And while we are at it, I am going to analyze why the Crash Bandicoot franchise has been in a long hiatus ever since the release of this game, because, trust me, it's not the mind over mutant's fault. But before we go into the review itself, I have to address the game that came out right before this one, Crash of the Titans. Long story short, most people didn't like it because it's focused more on action rather than platforming, especially with the use of giant mutants named Titans. In my eyes, it's an okay game. It's not necessarily bad, but it's nothing too special either. If I were to give it a score, it would be a 6 out of 10. Crash of the Titans had a unique concept which led to very entertaining gameplay with an interesting story and hilarious writing. However, it suffered from repetitive gameplay, linear levels and especially the worst character redesigns in the entire franchise. I mean, look at what they did to Tiny Tiger! Crash, I really am cross with you. I'm just trying to do my job and you go and cause all this chaos. No! No! Mind Over Mutant's main goal was to reuse the formula that was created for Crash of the Titans and make it a lot better. I tell you this so you can have the same perspective as me. Now when I will analyze Mind Over Mutant, you will see the improvements made over the last game. And why the hell I'm still talking? This is a Crash Bandicoot review and it already got more convoluted than the Kingdom Hearts plot. Let's shut up and dive into the story. This is a Crash Bandicoot game, of course the story is not going to be very important. However, it still is interesting to an extent. Classic villain of the franchise, Neo Cortex, teams up with his old friend and enemy, Nitrous Brio. I was in the first game! Yes, that Nitrous Brio. And they both build a device named NB which is used to control the minds of its user and transform them into deadly beasts. So, the doctors trick the bandicoots and they sell the device to our heroes when they advertise the NB as an entertainment gadget. Yeah, I am sure there is a satire of modern culture somewhere around that. After Coco and Crunch get transformed into monsters, 
Now it's up to Crash to save his friends and destroy all MB so Cortex and Brio don't conquer the world. Insert your generic M. Bison clip here. So yeah, the plot may not be that unique or special, but it's far more interesting than the stories for most of the PS1 Crash games in my eyes. However, what makes me love the story of Mind Over Mutant is the humor. Just like Prince Sanity, almost everything that the characters say is well written and downright hilarious, with great lines like... But wait you revolting peons, there's more! I just can't think of it right now. I'm only gonna say this once, Engine. Get off our island! I'm sorry, I'm not here to tag your message right now. Please leave a message after the beep! I created Slinkies! Stop playing with them because they're mine! I especially want to address the new character designs. I mean, yeah, they are based off the Titans design so they still don't look very well. At least not as good as the design in old games. However, I have to give them credit for at least trying to make the characters look more appealing and more faithful to the original titles. That and Tiny Tiger doesn't appear in this game. Hooray for that! At the end of the day, while the story of this game may not be the best in the series, I think the humor keeps it interesting and engaging to some extent, especially because of a certain factor that I will mention in the next segment. And at the end of the day, do you really care that much for the plot in a Crash Bandicoot game? Yeah, I don't think so. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. Presentation-wise, the cutscenes in Mind Over Mutant are just some of the best I've ever seen. Each one of them has a different animation style than the other. Heck, some of them even makes parody of classic cartoons like Dragon Ball and even South Park. Crash Bandicoot did a South Park parody. You have no idea how amazing and hilarious that is for me. Combined with the funny writing I already mentioned and you got yourself one of the most memorable and charismatic games of the century. People can say whatever they want about the new Crash games, but you gotta give them credit. Alongside the acapella soundtrack from Twin Sanity, these cutscenes may be one of the most unique ideas for the presentation of a game. Animated cutscenes aside, the graphics of Mind Over Mutant are good, but nothing too special. This game is available in PS2, Wii and Xbox 360, yet I don't really see much difference in the graphics of each version. And it's really odd if you consider each console is more powerful than the other. Aside from that, the environments are just as they should be in every game with a cartoon art style. They are all colorful and charismatic. You got your basic areas we've seen tons of times before. A snow level, a desert level, a factory level, and don't worry, there is no water level. And you know what? I am disappointed. I mean, with the use of different titans, they could have actually made a very decent water level. But now I'm just rambling, let's move on. The soundtrack of Mind Over Mutant is just like the graphics. It's good, but forgettable in most parts. They actually do a very good job fitting each situation or level, and some songs can be pretty catchy. But at the end of the day, you won't find a particular song that you will like to listen to after you play the game unlike the music in most of the previous Crash Bandicoot games. The voice acting is incredible and it makes the humor a lot better than it already is. Heck, even Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself, makes some minor voice work in this game. Overall, everyone does a very good job that fits perfectly into their characters, especially the voice of Dr. Cortex. I don't care how many people will flame me for saying this, but I will say it anyways. I really don't care for Clancy Brown. Lex Lang is hands down the best Cortex voice actor, and I love every second of it. Before we move on to the really important section, the gameplay, let me tell you something really interesting. Did you know that Radical Entertainment held a contest for kids to draw themselves alongside Crash, and the winner has actually got their drawing to appear in the game? Isn't that awesome? I remember I tried to send my own entry, but I lost. I mean, look at this! How could this not make it in? It's so awesome! What? No, I don't have a baby brother who drew this for me. Why do you ask that? However, it doesn't really matter how many good ideas I can find in the story and presentation of this game, since the gameplay is the area that truly matters. And to be honest, the gameplay in Mind Over Mutant is quite a mixed bag. 
Instead of just relying on his spin attack, Crash Bandicoot relies mostly on a simple melee combat in this game. It's your basic stuff. One button for light attack and another for heavy attack. And before you worry, yes, he can still spin around. Overall, the controls for the combat are easy and intuitive, but I found some issues with the platforming control. It's really weird. Crash of the Titans was more of a beat'em up rather than a platformer, yet its controls were way more accessible than Mind Over Mutant, in which the jumping and landing is more finicky. At the end of the day, it's not too bad, since it won't take you long to get used to it, but it's still a weird control skin, which is nowhere near as smooth or fluid as previous games, especially to Insanity. Well, at least there's some variety to it, since Crash can climb through walls or even dig around like in Cortex Strikes Back. This way you can get some fun from exploration and platforming with very simple ideas. There are several great improvements from the last game though, and one of them is the fact that now Crash can avoid enemy attacks with a simple quick time event. It may sound weird at first, but it works wonders for this simplistic combat system. This new mechanic, alongside the accessible control scheme, makes the melee combat of Mind Over Mutant really deep and entertaining. Too bad I can't say the same about the platforming. Just like in the last game, Crash can also collect Mojo Spheres in order to automatically upgrade his abilities and the Titan's abilities. However, just like in Titans, this is really pointless as you don't really feel a sense of progression after each upgrade. I personally never felt more powerful during this game, so the Mojo collection ends up feeling really unnecessary. Of course, despite all the good stuff we can find here, this doesn't mean the combat is actually perfect. If anything, it's kinda repetitive after a while. Obviously, in order to keep it fresh, we have the inclusion of the Titans, and oh boy, these mutants are my favorite thing in the entire game, even if most Crash Bandicoot fans hate them. Looking back at Crash of the Titans, one of the biggest flaws of that game is that, like I just mentioned before, it was way too much focused on action. The Titans were mostly used just for the combat and had almost no input in the lackluster platforming. Because of this, that game felt really repetitive and stale after playing for a while. Luckily for us, Mind Over Mutant had the clever idea of letting you use the different abilities of the Titans for both the combat and the platforming, mixing up in a really unique and overall really fun gameplay. Like Crash, the mutants have a light and a heavy attack to fight, but they also have special moves that are really awesome to use, both to take down enemies and to solve some puzzles in order to proceed. Obviously, every Titan is just amazing and unique by itself. They all have different designs, combat styles and special abilities, which are used for some really entertaining gameplay. Of course, there are some Titans that feel really gimmicky to use, like the TK or the Snipe, but most of them are still a joy to play as. In order to explore areas, you may need to freeze water with the Ratsicle, or roll around at the speed of sound like Sonic the Hedgehog with the help of the Rhino Roller, or jump through falling debris by stopping time with the Grimly and much more. Combine these ideas with huge levels with great design and atmosphere, and the Titan's gameplay becomes into the best thing about Mind Over Mutant. It can get repetitive at times as well, I ain't gonna lie about that, but it's way more refreshing than in the previous game. Before I stop gushing on these awesome monsters, let me address other two major improvements from Crash of the Titans. First of all, now the Titans can actually jump! Trust me, it's so simple, but it makes the controls way smoother. Secondly, now you can store up to two Titans in your pocket in order to transport them from one place to another. That's actually pretty clever, might as well give Crash a hat and some badges and he becomes the newest Pokemon master. Along with its predecessor, Mind Over Mutant is the only Crash game with a very sweet two players co-op option. It's not mandatory to beat the game, it's not that exciting, but if you have a friend to try it out, it can really get hectic and entertaining, especially since one of the players can turn into a flying mask, similar to Aku Aku, that shoots chickens at the enemies. Awesome! What's worth noticing is that you actually get to play as Coco in the Wii and Xbox version of these games. Too bad you still play as Carbon Crash in the PS2 version, the one I got. Oh well. Yet another improvement from Crash of the Titans is the inclusion of a pseudo overworld, similar to Twin Sanity. Instead of having different levels separated from each other with a warp room or a level select screen, they are all connected directly to each other. I would normally like this new approach, but it's the main reason of Mind Over Mutant's biggest flaw, the freaking backtracking. 
you thought Metroid was bad? Oh boy, then you have no idea how atrocious the backtracking in this game is. There are many, many situations in which Crash will have to walk on his own footsteps and return to previous areas by walking. Sadly, I'll have to take off a lot of points because of this, as it can get incredibly aggravating and it may even ruin the experience for some gamers. It's tedious, it's lazy, and it's overall a bad idea for your game. Well, at least this lazy overworld has some stuff that is worth looking for. Just like in the last game, there are tons of hidden collectibles to find and minigames to beat in order to unlock things like alternate costumes, concept art, and much more. It's nothing too special that will keep you wanting to find more collectibles and beat more minigames, but it's a great little incentive to keep on playing after you beat the game. Luckily, Mind Over Mutant is a bit longer than to Insanity, so you won't end up too much disappointed with its length. If there's something that Mind Over Mutant did not improve a lot from the last game, is the boss battles. Just like Crash of the Titans, there are just three bosses in the entire game. This is just so painful to me, not only because I am a boss battle enthusiast, I have 9 counters about them and counting, yay! But also because the inclusion of the titans make up for a lot of potential for some amazing bosses. The final boss of the game is actually very good, at least enough to make it into my personal top 10 Crash Bandicoot bosses, but the battles against Crunch is just good and the battle against Coco is just awful. I was really disappointed by this lackluster boss fight selection. In conclusion, the gameplay of Mind Over Mutant can be summed up as good, but could have been better. The inclusion of the titans is the best thing in the game as the gameplay ends up as unique and entertaining, same with other mechanics like digging and climbing, but you'll still find some repetitive sections, awkward controls, disappointed and limited boss battles, and tedious backtracking. I felt like saying this because I want you to understand that I perfectly see the flaws in this game, despite how much I love it. So let's wrap up this review, shall we? So yeah, Crash Mind Over Mutant is not a perfect game, but it still is full of some unique and great ideas, and it really depresses me that a lot of people blatantly hate it and Crash of the Titans just because they are different. I think we can all imagine what's going on in the minds of most angry fanboys. I don't want change! I don't want change! Everything has to stay the same! Now, don't get me wrong, I do know people who don't like this game and its predecessor for very solid reasons and I respect their opinion. I mean, I did mention how many flaws this game has, and I can see why some of them may turn away some people, but in my eyes, there is not enough to say this is a bad game. I personally believe Mind Over Mutant is nowhere near as good as the PS1 trilogy, to Insanity, or even Wrath of Cortex, but I still think it's way better than the GBA games, Crash Bash, the racing spin-offs, and especially Crash of the Titans, which, don't get me wrong, it's a game I still really enjoy. The great animated cutscenes, the catchy soundtrack, the hilarious writing and voice acting, the colorful environments, and the unique and entertaining gameplay with the titans, which managed to reach a balance between action and platforming, were all really clever ideas, and they are definitely worth trying out. Like I mentioned, Mind Over Mutant holds some glaring issues anyways. The controls take their time to get used to, the false sense of progression, some repetitive gameplay sections, the lackluster boss battles, and especially, the tedious backtracking. Overall, I will give Crash Mind Over Mutant my final score of a 7.5 out of 10, and I will label it with the word unique. Both the presentation and gameplay made this game really one of its kind. Sadly, despite all of this, it seems everyone else in the internet hates Crash of the Titans and Mind Over Mutant. Of course, I managed to find some cool people like my friend in Finland, who likes these games as much as I do, and I will be glad to know if some of you watching likes these games as well. Again, this may not be a perfect game, but it holds some creative and downright fun ideas that are worth your time. If you hate it just because it's different, I say you should give it another chance with different eyes. So, if it's not the game's fault then, this means the Crash Bandicoot franchise didn't release a main game in 6 years because of the fan base? Of course not, that would be a stupid assumption. I blame Activision itself. They currently hold the license to one of gaming's most iconic and beloved mascots, and what are they doing with it? They released two pointless iOS games and never did something with Crash Bandicoot ever since 2010! 
Oh, and of course, they cancelled a lot of projects for the franchise. Now that I think of it, this sounds similar to another evil company who is not given a platform in mass code the proper treatment. Interesting. It's just disgusting to see how Activision gave up on the franchise when it clearly has a lot of potential for more awesome games. This is why I still didn't give up on Crash Bandicoot like Activision did. Some would say it's dead, but I prefer to think that the franchise is sleeping, and somebody, either Activision or Naughty Dog, will awake him in the near future. I am Obsidious fan, and those are my feelings towards Crash Mind over Mutant and the current situation of the Crash Bandicoot franchise. So, what are your opinions on this game and the franchise? What games do you wanna see me review next? Leave a comment down below and I will be happy to read them. Thanks a lot for watching, and in case you are wondering which are my favorite titans from this game and its predecessor, let me say I will tell you about that in a future countdown with the help of a Finnish friend. Ha 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 ha!